two years, mm -hmm. but um, there was a big gap in that which went to come back to Durham and to go see the music from there.
So we're also going to do research and development research and development of organizations. Yeah. 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 Ye
the art and media doesn't include the marketing team either. So that's just the stuff, the A4 bits of paper we're putting the printers and copiers across UCM. Uh, we, we generate enough uncompacted uh, waste to fill the NSC and the recycling is there. So they're the measures that we've got to start with. And I think that's, that's quite an important thing to do for your organisers to say, where are we today? And that's just roughly some of the stuff that we've, we've dug out. We've got other facts, but that's just that one. The research we did around it then is to say, okay, so now we know where we're at, and we're going to improve. I mentioned the Association of Colleges. Uh, they, they released in 2021 the, the Green College Commitment, and there's a role plan in there, the EUAC, which we're now a member. They're an organisation that support colleges and universities to transition to a more sustainable future. And then we went, well, what do our stakeholders think about that? So um, what we did there was put a survey out under the student voice to our students. And unfortunately for this, what we did was the release date of the survey only included full-time students. So we got 30% response from the full-time students. This year it's going out in an earlier student voice survey and all our students will be asked the question, what well, similar questions to these about sustainability. We also asked the staff, what does sustainability mean to them? And you can see there that the top one is about the immediate stuff that we can do about increasing recycling and things like that. So we've got a measure for what our stakeholders think. The other part of our stakeholders are governors, and at governors meeting we did a, a, a session on sustainability and what sustainability meant to governors as well. Our journey so far has been two years. So I mentioned here about the environmental group, uh, the Green Coast Commitment, that was a big thing, a major launch across uh, in, the, in England where they've signed up and they've put a pledge in and stuff like that. So really, it's a really good document for our, our sector, but no matter where your organisation is, there are some sectors that are already beyond where we are currently. Uh, we did an idea storming exercise in 22, but in the end of 21 we were getting the ideas out and uh, I got criticised, I put it all on a big poster, so this big piece of paper and all that ink, oh, and then stuck it into the SLT room and got people to come in and make comments on it. So that was the first one, and if you look at it, it's a typical mind map where there's just stuff randomly placed, <coughs> but it was just to get an idea of a flavour for what is our appetite for sustainability. We formed the Sustainability Task and Finish Group, uh, part of that responsibility was to feed in to the development of the model, what these what staff felt about it, not just our managers, but the staff, all our staff, and we got some access to student voice as well. Not a great deal, but some, which were informative in the early days of getting them out together. And then we got feedback from the proposed from the proposed model from the managers. Uh, that was a similar presentation to this, but in a lot of detail about what it, what it was, how it was going to be shaped. And then we did then we did the second draft. Then we got feedback from governors, so we took that draft to governors. You can see all this there, we did a third draft, we got more feedback. And then we actually got back to where we are today, which is producing the working documents. And that's the biggest thing we've got, is that we've got a policy, we've got a strategic statement, which I'll come on to in a second, but realistically, what people want is how we're going to do it. And that's where I think this model works or succeeds. And today's the official launch. We did do a soft launch. Uh, in June, July with the managers uh, just to get the key theme leaders on board realistically. So strategic statement, that's what the sustainability group put together. It's a very similar statement to more strategic statements when it comes to uh, sustainability. Uh, but what is it about really? Well, for us it's about that. We say we want to reduce our carbon footprint, we want to use resources carefully and reuse and recycle. So that's at the heart of what we're trying to do. So if we're going to make any difference, that's what we're going to concentrate on. So we'll look at things like this. Well, why do we do that? So facilities wise, I mentioned there about how much electricity we burn a year, 210 homes or the equivalent. Uh, so what we're going to do about that? Do we're using renewables. Uh, this is the biggest change, it's about empowering. I'm going to talk about empowering in one of the slides later, but it's the empowerment of people because the early, the keynote presented to us this morning, we talking about a question we put to him was, 
are you sure people are aware about it? And it's, it's probably not, they're probably not there yet. But like I said, we've got, we've got 3,000 individuals that we can hopefully change hearts and minds about. And then how we're going to do it, we're looking at can we do, so every decision now with the SLT when we're taking a significant project is can we do it for sustainability, sustainably rather, and if we can't change it, then how can we be more sustainable, sustainability positive? And I've got, I think, a couple of good examples of that there as well. The key drivers, so the compliance part, is all that. So you've got the Climate Change Act. Now also under the Climate Change Act, there's a responsibility of government departments to produce an annual report. So that's an additional part for us to do, because we all work for DES, which is a government department. And then everything else you're probably aware of. Big drivers for me and my position on the model is the DES strategic plan and the UCM strategic plan. Does this model fit into those plans? Also what we're going to be looking at is the United Nations Sustainability Goals. It's a bit small that, so I apologise for that. But the, the, the main focus for us is obviously quality of education and we can make direct, direct impacts on these other ones there. So it's about empowering people, engaging with them, and uh, educating. That leads us towards these ones, which is, we can impact on that, but eventually we'll do all 17, because if we get the top part of the triangle right, the bottom part of that triangle, well that's not quite a triangle, I'm not sure what that is, uh, would be, be coming forward. So we can't, ECM can't end poverty, but if we can engage with people and reduce poverty, that's a positive thing for us. And the beauty of Chris being honest, she's the champ. So when we're looking at this, how are we going to measure it, which quite frankly 12 months ago I had no clue, uh, but we have put something together and I asked Krista only last week, I think it was yeah. last week, uh, to be part of the team, so a sub-team that will look at sustainability goals and how will UCM be able to measure them. And with Krista's expertise knowledge, we can all be rest assured it's going to be spot on. <laughs> <laughs> so what's our model look like? Well, as always, any model's got to start at the top and you have to forgive me now because I am a, a, a builder so a lot of my stuff is around building so that's the top part of the roof. So more sustainable UCM, that's what we're trying to achieve. We've got the policies and procedures in place and all that really is fostered and, and, and chilled up by the key themes. Uh, the key, we've got five key themes, and I'll go through those in a sec, and they're to prop up the top part of it. So the roof is the protective part, gives us a chance to do things. And then the last part there is all showed up, all put underneath on a strong foundation, one of the key activities, which I'll explain off more. But more importantly, it's to stretch and challenge. Because at the minute where most people go, well, we're only an island in the middle of the Irish Sea, we can't make much of a difference. But the keynote speaker, Douglas, said we can and it's time we all recognise that. Um, we're going to produce some KPIs, we haven't at the minute, but we will. But the beauty of the KPIs is they were produced by each key theme. So the model's not dictating to the, to the theme leaders what your KPIs is. It's saying, where are they? How are we going to measure that? So the first one is the leadership staff of governance. That's really what they do. But to put it all in one word, it's about enabling. So with it, that group enables the, the model to work, so it's about establishing resources for the model. It's about putting policies in place, it's about freeing resources up. So that's the enabler, that's the part that says, right, this is the direction, let's crack on, let's do it. This is the big one, Joe's got that, Joe Richardson, which is our VP for Curriculum uh, and Quality. Is that the right way? Thanks. Uh, and now that's the biggest one, that's why I refer to about 3,000 individuals, is that's the learning side of it. That's the part that is going to empower people to say, I understand what sustainability means to me, to the island, and hopefully on a global aspect as well. Estates and operations, that's going to be a, a challenge. Being a builder, you'd think I would leave that, but I purposely took myself out of it. And that's looking about all our operations and can we put waste reduction strategies in place. And that's evolving. That's going to be the evolver. So this is what we do now, 210 houses. Can we get that less? Is it possible? And then the parks and engagement, that's all about the culture. That's about getting people internally on board with it, getting, getting people motivated and, and reporting that back, but also in the community as well. So it's engaging with the community. Last summer we did a session with Beats Buddies, for example. 
So that the, they're the encouragers. And then the, the last key thing, which is the shared team activities, that's realistically about pulling all the data sets together. So you said you're going to measure the carbon footprint, let's have a look at that carbon footprint, what does it look like? They are, they are what I call the sustainability police, because they're, they're going to ensure that we're doing what we say we're going to do. So part of that is the plan, do, check, act theme. So the, each key theme is ended up by a member of the senior leadership team. Uh, Joe, I mentioned, is going to do the, the learning and research. Pamela, Pamela's not here today, neither is Rom. She's going to do a partnership engagement. Rom's going to end up with states and operations. And poor old me, I've got the leadership staff and governance. I've just been speaking to Les about the governor joining our next meeting. And I'm going to head up from now the shared team activities that probably will look after itself after a while. But at the start of the model, I intend to head up to key themes. So their themes, just briefly gone through them there. But what are, they, what are they here to do? So what we've identified is a set of key activities. Now these are fixed. Uh, and all the autonomy that we've built into the, to the models for the, for the theme areas, there's certain things that we're saying, as the SLT, you've got to achieve. So I did do this slide, but I've cut it back a little bit because it looked really complicated on screen. But essentially, each, each key theme has got key activities to achieve. And although they go along like that, they could be done in any order. So I've just screenshot those two really just to say this is what the key themes look like. But more importantly, there's the roadmap, and all the key themes of every group is mapped out. Mm. Uh, I can't remember how many there is, but I know Joe's got a lot. <laughs> so um, yeah, so like that. So you look at that; it looks linear, but it's not. So for example, the top two are, are my group, and you say, "What are the views? What, what does GCM think about sustainability?" So we've done that. Established committee, we've done that. That makes sense to do that first, but after that that we actually cherry picked out as to what, if there's any quick wins. And all of the key theme leaders in that group can do that, so they're, they're empowered to do that part of it. But those are fixed. I say fixed, it is a working document, and uh, I do know that one of the key theme leaders have already come back and said, can we change one? That will go then to the LSG, they'll decide whether or not we think it's a good strategic move to do it, and then we'll approve it or not. So, that's why I said at the very start of this, all this stuff is a working document. I don't believe in writing it, putting it on a shelf and then forgetting about it. All this stuff has got access and, and, and deserves to be driven by all our staff and I'll go into that in a sec. We have got a draft delivery plan, uh, so this is more important than fine words on a piece of paper. That's what we're going to say we're going to do it, and there's the times that we're going to do it in, so that's the time span. <coughs> and the split between every year there'll be a review of the model until the very last year, the fifth year, where we're going to say, okay, we've, re we've reviewed the model, is the model still right for us? And then, whoever's in charge of sustainability in five years' time, could be me, who knows, uh, will need to refresh this model, or indeed, put it to bed and come up with a new one. And it's a draft because not all the key themes have met, and we've not agreed it as, as the final delivery plan, but that's the draft at the minute. Too bad. So the makeup of the groups. The makeup of the groups is essential that we can cover as many different aspects of UCM as we can. So in, in my group there, we've got a lot of the leaders. Uh, and we've also got heads of departments. We've got managers of certain uh, activities, and then we've got a guest. So every key theme has got a structured, fixed membership. So those people at the top, they'll be invited to every single meeting. But the guests will include a range of people. And you'll see the very first name on that list there is the principal, because the previous slide when it goes through who's got responsibility for what, the principal's not been mentioned. Well, the principal's the head of the organisation, surely Jess sets the strategic direction, and that's exactly right. But I think if you're too operational onto it, you get blinkered by we can't do that because you know well, I think that's gone up and that's gone up, we can't do that because of that. Whereas I think what Jess's view is when we do reports back to Jess then she'll get that and go, yeah, actually, I think this strategy is working quite well. I think the operational side of it is good. Whereas, I think if you're involved in it, I think it would be too messy. Uh, the research system, so again, that breaks it down there. Again, we've got guests that come there. The guests can include, by the way, external speakers, and in some extent, it could include consultants. When I put this model together, 
I were absolutely driven, I'm going to get a consultant in to measure the carbon footprint because it's too complicated. Do not go away measuring carbon footprint, scopes one, two, and three. Yeah? yeah? So one's easy. How much energy do we use? That much. Ding. Two. Oh, well, what's the energy consumed by getting them? That's a bit tricky. And scope three is everything else that we do. So that's too complicated for me. I'm, I'm a simple fellow, really. I get a consultant in. So we are part of the Northwest Consortium of Colleges. I went to one of their meetings, teams. Uh, we're chatting about that, and the, one of the guys who's used the consulting went, it's a nightmare. Because the only thing to do is measure that, but you've still got to measure it. So I said, well, give me the list that we've got to measure, and then I can measure it in my, my paper consulting. So we did a bit of sharing, reinventing the wheel, it's not a good thing. Estates and operations, carry on, and you can see that people drop into there, and hopefully you've spotted there's a student council rep in every single theme. Because when we took this to governors, we, have, we do actually have a student that is on the board of governors, and just talking to that one person enlightened me so much about what the student's idea is, what sustainability means to some students. So they're in every single one apart from one. And that's the police. They're not involved in the police because it'd be too boring. Mm -hmm. Doing reports, come on. What student wants to sit in that? Okay, so that's, that's the general gist of it. That's the membership within each group. What do we do next then? So what's the next part? Well, the next part is really about the action plans of each team. So the action plans were written and de devolved out to the teams. Uh, the structure's not changed much, but uh, the contents can differ completely. However, the first part can. So you'll see there's a reference here. So that is a key activity. That's the reference to it. And that is fixed. So that first sheet on the document looks like that for every key theme. And it takes out their key activity, where are we today? And that gets updated at the end of each meeting. The next part, so if you look at that 01 reference, the 01 reference there, I'm not bothered about that. Please aren't bothered about that. How you get to that key activity is completely up to that theme. And that could, that could be a range of things. Uh, so I'm, I'm quite... I'm, a, I'm quite enthusiastic about this. I want it to work. But that I can control, how the key theme is going to do it, I want them to control, because they're going to be part of the system. Otherwise, they're not buying into it. So that part is completely loose, how they get it completely to them. And then some things that are coming back now, and I did try to do this earlier, but it didn't work, I'll go back to it to show you that. Uh, so, sorry, I'm rambling now. So that, that's, that's the, that's the free-for-all, structure it as much as you like. And that can be 30 activities long, or it could be six. It depends on that particular theme. How we do the sustainability goals then, so the, the slide previously about 17 uh, sustainable delivery goals, then what we're looking at there, so it's, I don't know, I remember the first time I looked at it, I looked at it and said, no poverty. Um, okay, what does that mean for me? I don't even know what that means for me. Uh, but the Times Education do a, an award every year where they measure universities, not colleges, but universities, and they've got a, they've got a format. And I started doing a lot of research into that and actually went into each one and pulled out what it meant to UCM. Because we're not a university, we're not a full-blown university, we're a university college. So it's an adapting that to us and where we are. Uh, more importantly, where we are, we've got different legislation, not that affects sustainability goals, but it does affect grants and things like that. But it's about our breadth and width, the curriculum that UCM delivers, which a lot of colleges just simply don't. So that's a guide. And that's to help the key themes go, which sustainability goal do we feed into? Because I don't know. So you can get that, take it as a guide and say, it's going to be that, that, or that. And then, like I said, we've got Kristen L on board and she's going to look at that, so this is how we can measure it. What is it reporting? This is all part of what just government does, doesn't it? You know, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to feed back. Uh, there's also a requirement on the climate change act, which I referred to earlier about the, there's, there's an annual report that needs to be done by government departments. We will feed into desks on that. And then uh, Wes and Jeff, as governors, they'll get an annual report as to the progress, where we're up to, any feedback. And more importantly, which I think is great to see now on a lot of papers that the governors want more case studies. You know, what does it actually mean on the ground? And then we do media releases and Roxy, Warren earlier, and marketing manager. So what's the progress today? Well, I think we've come a long way from a thought in my head to 
piece of papers and getting the teams together. So we've introduced the model, that's, that's a major step forward. Uh, we've got the action plans updated, I wanted to show you a live one of them, which I will attempt to do at the end of this, because I know it crashes the machine. Uh, we've got, we know where our stakeholders are with, with the sustainability. We've started carbon literacy training, all the managers started that in either early July or late June. Uh, they did a two day training course on that, and all of their uh, submissions have to be in at the end of half term. So I'm getting a lot of panicky people sending me emails about that, but that's good. You know. They're still thinking about it, that's the main thing. Uh, we've, got, we've identified a measurement of some areas for consumption and recycling, hence the average electric we use. Uh, the, the, the development of student tutorials and curriculum, we've already introduced a level two, a city goals level two in sustainability and green living, and increases the digitised assessment and teaching. So that's to reduce the carbon or the paper that we use in there. So we've got one file, which is, a, is one file BTEC. That's just a general e-portfolio. Yeah, so we've got three or four different e-portfolios for different areas, because <laughs> some sectors prefer a particular type of e-portfolio to another. And then, this is, this is some of the stuff that is exciting, I think it's quite exciting, but engagement sustainability practice. So, we've introduced new for this year, a farm to fork project in, in our catering system. So, managed produce comes first, above anything else, low miles, all the stuff like that. So, that's a good initiative that we've picked up. But also, another one which we've had, and we've had this for quite some time, but it, it's, it's only when you start looking into the data, you start thinking, oh yeah, that's a really good thing. So, in construction, we buy bricks and blocks, obviously, lots of them that are carbon in them. The bricks that we buy are from Colmets over at Peel. Uh, the sand that they use is dug out the ground over that way, and then that comes to us. The other stuff we do have to buy from across. But then when we use it, we we'll use that brick or block at least six times. So the reuse factor of that is enormous. If we could get this in a lot of other areas, what we do would be fantastic. So at least six times, sometimes ten. Then they're going to skip. Oh, we're going to skip. Well, no, because the skip then takes them and then Corlitz crushes them and then we use it again as aggregate. So that's a real cycle, uh, circular economy in that one project. And we're, we've done that for a number of years, but we're quite proud about it. And so when you start looking into it, you start recognising a lot more successes that are out there, but probably not aware of it. And I apologise, Roger. Any questions? <laughs>